Hello, we're going to be talking about factors in this video. Factor questions ask you to uh, use your knowledge of both algebraic and numeric factors. On the easy questions, I want you to build factor trees, and we'll talk about prime factors. And on the harder algebraic questions, you need to know a few algebraic factors and make sure that you have them memorized so that you can use them. So what's a factor tree? A factor tree is, in a sense, uh, a tree that helps you understand what the prime factors are. So what I want you to do is to take a number like 56, and initially, if it's even, just divide by 2, because 2 is prime. That yields 2 times 28. Now take the 28 and divide it by 2. So now we have 2 times 2 times 14. Again, take the 14, divide it by 2, and we yield 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. So 2 and 7 are the only prime factors of 56. If the number isn't, prime, or isn't even, then you can divide, try to divide it by 3, 5, or 7 initially. But generally, you're always going to be able to find one easy prime factor that goes into the number. If nothing goes into it, then it, it, it itself is prime. So factor trees can be done as you, um, this way, or you, could, or you could just simply try to de determine how many prime numbers go into the number and, and do that. But that, this is a little bit more foolproof. So let's talk about least common multiple. The least common multiple is the smallest number that two numbers go into. In order to do this, we are going to need to do factor trees again. So with 56, we already know that its prime factors are 2, 2, 2, and 7, or just actually 2 and 7 if you're talking about unique factors. 36, on the other hand, its prime factors are 2 and 3, but its factorization is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. When we're looking for the least common multiple, we need to take the highest amount of every prime factor. For example, 56 has three twos, 36 has two twos, so we're going to have to take three twos so that our number is divisible by eight. We're also going to have to take a seven from 56 and the three from 36, which would be two times two times three times three times seven, and that's 504. You can check by dividing 504 by both 56 and 36. Greatest common factor questions are kind of the opposite from least common multiple in the sense that we're looking for the largest number that goes into both numbers. So again, we need to do a factor tree for both 56 and 36 to do this. But now we're looking for the least amount of overlap. So for example, 56 has three twos, 36 has two twos. Well, there's two in both, so we're going to take two. Neither, or both numbers don't have seven, so we can't include that. And both numbers don't have three, so we can't include that. So our greatest common factor here is four. Algebraic factors, it's really imperative that you memorize these factors I have here below. Algebraic factor questions often just, if you can write the factors in, uh, uh, instead of the equation or vice versa, you can often solve the question quite easily. And that's because you can avoid doing difficult algebra. So if you look at this question below, it says xy equals 12, x, plus y, x squared plus y squared equals 25. What's the value of x plus y squared? Now if we know x plus y squared based on our factors is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, then we have everything we need. xy is 12, so 2xy is 24. And x, plus y, x squared plus y squared is 25. So x plus y squared would be 24 plus 25, or 49. Oftentimes, whenever you're asked for something that's not simply an x or a y, it involves an algebraic factor, and it can be done much quicker than had you tried to solve for x and y directly. One last thing about factors, you need to understand the relationship between solutions and factors. If I give you a quadratic and I tell you that it has solutions of 5 and 8, then it has factors of x minus 5 and x minus 8. Same thing's true with variables. If a and b are the solutions to a quadratic, then the factors are x minus a and x minus b. Going the other way, if x minus 4 and x minus 3 are the factors, then the solutions are 4 and 3. So don't freak out when they say the factors of an equation or the solutions of an equation are a and, and b, and they ask you for the factors because you just write x minus a and x minus b and multiply out, and you're done. So we're going to look at some factor questions on the SAT to help you master this topic. Thank you.